This video is an introduction and explanation of the 2024-2025 Science Olympia Tower Rules specifically for Division C. I will only be discussing the design part of the rules, so please make sure you read and understand all aspects of the rules before any competitions. Before I get into the specifics of this year's rules, I thought it might be a good idea to take a step back and talk about this event in more general terms. The base rules for this event haven't changed in over 10 years and perhaps a lot longer. The reason for that is they are primarily guided by the standardized testing equipment shown here. Regardless of what is being tested, typically bridges, towers, or boom levers, the testing of those devices is always done in the same way. There is a hard, flat testing surface with a 20 cm square hole in the middle for bridges and towers, and a rigid wall with a hook for boom levers. The loading involves a 5 by 5 cm block with an eye bolt through the middle. From there, an S-hook is used to attach a chain which connects to a bucket with another S-hook. The bucket hangs from the device above the floor and sand is then loaded until it breaks or a full load of 15 kg is achieved. Loading can be done with a nice auto loader system like this or by hand. The core principle of this event, regardless of the year, involves trying to build the most efficient device. The rules change every year with design restrictions and potential bonus scoring enhancements, but at the end of the day, we are trying to build a device where the maximum load it holds divided by its mass is the highest. For example, here is a tower column that weighs 1.834 grams, and when it broke during testing, the bucket with sand, loading block, and chain weighed 13,246 grams. That would mean its efficiency is just over 7,222. This is a very important concept to understand, and it's the basis for scoring in this event every year. Here is a picture of my primary testing surface. For now, you can ignore the white lines and just focus on the core piece and the 20 by 20 centimeter hole in the middle. Here is a precise scale drawing of the testing surface with just the 20 by 20 centimeter hole. The rules state that the size of the rest of the testing surface must be at least 55 centimeters long by 32 centimeters wide. In my experience, it's a good idea to assume the minimum size for most competitions. While generally not applicable to bridges or boom levers, it has been common for the towers event to expect to have a 29 centimeter circle drawn on the testing surface to designate part of the requirements for the bonus scoring. Here is the CAD drawing with the 29 centimeter circle. The next general specification usually involves specifying where the 5 by 5 centimeter loading block must be. It is typically stated that it must be in the center of the 20 by 20 centimeter square within a tolerance of 2.5 centimeters in any direction. That means that the blue loading block must be within the green space here. Generally, you want to design symmetric devices if possible, which means the block will be in the center, but there is some room for error or minor design tweaks. With all that background, now let's start talking about this year's specific Division C tower rules. The big change this year compared to last is that the towers can only have three legs. The way that is being specified is by defining four quadrants on the test base. By extending lines from the center point to the corners of the 20 centimeter square, that nicely defines four separate areas. Here are the four quadrants. For the purposes of this video, I'm only highlighting the area outside of the bonus circle, but it applies inside as well for the non-bonus design. The rules state that each of the three contact points must be in different quadrants. I will go into design decisions and considerations in more detail in future videos, but the first general shape that comes to mind that would follow the rules of three legs and loading in the center would be an equilateral triangle like shown here. The height rules have changed for this year to only require a minimum height of 50 centimeters instead of 60. The bonus rules are the same as last year, and if you decide to go for the bonus, your tower must span the 29 centimeter circle as well as hold the entire 15 kilograms. Here is a picture of the shape of an equilateral triangle build that could achieve the bonus. As we'll find out, while this shape is pretty simple, there are many challenges to actually building a tower like this. Take a few minutes to see if you can think of the most difficult thing we'll need to address. In the next video of this series, I will show my benchmark Division C build. This will give everyone a pretty good idea of what is possible and a score to compare against. 
In future videos, I will talk about the overall approach I took to achieve that build and talk about the specific construction challenges. Thanks for watching and please feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions.